Good morning. Thank you for joining us today in worship. We take this time to pause, praise God, and discover how we can grow more Christ-like together. As we begin, please join me in the call to worship, the opening hymn, and the opening prayer. Come, let us put God in the center of our lives. We rejoice in God's steadfast love. Come, let our gentleness be a reflection of God's love. We give thanks for Christ's enduring grace. Come, let us lay down our burdens and worries. We offer our needs to God in prayer. Come, let us focus on what is honorable and true. With hope, we turn now to God's guiding word. Let us pray together. Most holy God, we come into worship with thanksgiving and praise, but we also come before you with worries and doubts. As we lay these burdens down, fill us with your spirit and bless us with peace and joy. Keep our minds in Jesus Christ that we may remain focused on issues of justice and righteousness, love and grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Good morning. In today's Bible lesson, we're going to be hearing about a very important and well-known character. Many of you will remember Moses, Moses, who when he was born, was placed into a basket, and the basket placed into the river. Moses, who was raised in the Pharaoh's luxurious palace, where he had everything that he could have possibly ever wanted. But when Moses grew into a young man, he looked out and he saw that his people, the Israelites, were being oppressed. They were toiling and working like slaves under the Pharaoh's rulership. And that made Moses very angry. And so, with God's help, Moses led God's people out of Egypt into a land where they lived for nearly 40 years before God would open up the doors for them to enter the land that God had promised them. Now Moses had a brother named Aaron, and in many ways Moses relied on Aaron uh, for his help and support. 
in many ways, you could think of Aaron as being second in command to Moses' leadership over all the people. Well, in today's Bible story, Moses is an older man when he hears God's voice saying to him, come up to the mountain so that we can speak together. And Moses, being obedient to God, goes up to the mountain to speak with God. But you see, Moses is gone for nearly 40 days, and the people begin to wonder, where is he, and what are they to do? Well, during this time, Aaron is put into control of God's people, and they are becoming very impatient, asking, where is this Moses? When will he return? We want a God that we can see rather than this invisible God that Moses speaks about. And they are pressuring Aaron to do something, to do something for them. And so, bowing to the people's pressure, Aaron says, okay, then everyone, give me your gold necklaces, your bracelets, your rings, and everything gold into your ho- in your household, and I will put it in the melting pot. And Aaron does that. And out of that melting pot, they mold a golden calf. Well, the people love this golden calf. This statue is like their God, and they begin to bow down and worship it, forgetting all about their God in heaven. And Aaron says to them, let us create a feast and have a party tomorrow, and we will worship together this golden calf. Well, God, who is up in the heavens, looks down on the people in the valley and he sees what is happening and becomes so angry that he wants to destroy all of God's people. But Moses begs him, please do not destroy the people that you brought out of slavery and to whom you have promised a good and fruitful land. God's mind is changed and God's anger becomes calm. And he tells Moses to go back and teach the people once again to keep God first, always. Well, Moses does go back and to the people. And when he sees what is happening, he too is so angry. And he says to Aaron, what is happening here? And Aaron begins to make excuses. The people, they begged me, they pressured me to make a God that they could see and bow down and worship. But Moses is so angry that he destroys the golden calf. And he comes and he tells the people about the new covenant that God is making with them as described in the tablets. He describes that they are always to keep God as number one to never worship other things, not statues, not money, not possessions, not popularity, nothing aside from God as number one. Now this message is an important one for us today as well. When Moses speaks to the people, he's also speaking to us to say that we are always to keep God as number one in our lives. We, too, should never allow money or possessions or popularity or anything else to take the place of God being number one in our lives. This morning, let us pray that we will always keep God as number one in all that we do and all that we say. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we bow our heads before you, giving you thanks for our homes, our friends, our families, our church, and for the stories in the Bible that remind us of faithful people who have kept you as number one in their lives. Help us to keep you in our lives as the top priority in everything that we say and do. Dearest God, thank you for the many blessings that you have provided us, and we will always keep you as number one. 
For this, we lift up our prayers to you. Amen. Amen. And remember, God is always number one in our lives.
A reading from Exodus, the 32nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I have commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord of his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is understandable, I suppose, that the people of Israel lost their self-control when it appeared their leader, Moses, was not coming back. After all, they were out there in the wilderness Food and water were in short supply, and many had not wanted to leave their comfortable, albeit enslaved existence in Egypt in the first place. But because of Moses, they left. And now Moses was nowhere to be seen. So they have decided to make and follow their own gods. Today, we know what it is like to live in a leadership vacuum without a strong ethical leader at the top. Things start to unravel. People fight with one another, pull in opposite directions, and espouse 
different truths. In short, they chase after their own gods. It was the Chinese philosopher Confucius who said that people take their cues from their leaders and that good government should be quiet, absent of drama, and competent. Without strong and ethical leaders, the people are tossed and turned like bottles cast into the sea. Part of the sin of the people of Israel was their impatience. They felt they had waited long enough for Moses' return. And who could blame them? He had been gone for 40 days and 40 nights, which is the Bible's way of saying an exceedingly long time. For all they knew, Moses could have been mauled by a wild animal, suffered a heart attack, or decided to desert them. While the reader knows Moses is on Mount Sinai receiving the commandments of God, the people have been left on their own just to imagine what has happened. So they decide to take matters into their own hands. The current pandemic has tested our patience. We have been awaiting the return of normalcy, and it has not been 40 days, but over 200 days, and normalcy is nowhere to be seen. The doctors and public health officials have given us com commands to obey in the meantime, wear a mask, keep your distance from others, and wash your hands. But normalcy still has been delayed in coming. Some people have become restless and have turned to follow their own gods. In today's reading, the people turn to Aaron, and he is more than willing to try to meet their demands. Aaron is the brother of Moses and was left in charge while Moses was on the mountain. But Aaron is nothing like his brother, whereas Moses' ear was turned to God. Aaron's is turned to the people. He is what we would call a people pleaser. So in response to their request for their own gods, Aaron collects gold from the people burns it down, and creates a golden calf. The text literally says he fashioned it with a graving tool, which was a transgression of the second commandment. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything in the heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the waters underneath the earth. The people of Israel needed an enabler. They found one in Aaron. During the time of this pandemic, enablers have emerged to tell the people what they want to hear. There have been doctors who have contradicted the guidelines of public health officials and elected leaders who have declared victory when there is none. In a time of crisis, you will find plenty of people willing to deny or mislead because they think that is what the people want to hear. While on the mountain, God warns Moses what is taking place down below. God sees it all, and God is angry God says, go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it 
and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Notice how suddenly the people are Moses' people and not God's people. God tells Moses to stand back so that God can destroy them and start over again with Moses as their leader. God sees all and God cares enough to become angry when the people decide to follow their own gods. We sometimes forget about the wrath of God. It is not something Christians like to talk about, at least not in the mainline churches. We like to think of God as kind of like a therapist who just nods and says, I understand. But in today's text, God becomes angry when God sees the people forgetting who it was who freed them from slavery and deciding instead to follow other gods. But Moses calms God down. He says, why would you destroy the very people you brought out of Egypt? Why give the Egyptians reason to say their God brought them into the mountains just to kill them? Remember your promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how you swore to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. Just take a deep breath, count to 10, and do not bring about disaster on your people. It is remarkable that Moses or anyone could talk to God in that way. And it is even more remarkable that God listened to Moses and changed his mind. It gives us hope that our prayers can make a difference. But some people may take offense at this part of the story. To say we can change God's mind implies that God is capable of making errors and that some human beings know better than God. But who can know the mind of God? What the story tells us is that no matter what, God is faithful even when we are unfaithful. That while our going astray may displease or anger God, God will never cut us off. This was what the Apostle Paul learned through Christ, leading him to write, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The other day, a woman was telling me about her college-aged son. His birthday was a few weeks ago, and ever since he was a child, she would invite his closest friends over for a birthday party. She loves to cook, and her son's friends have become spoiled by her cooking. So this year, his friends called to ask, so when is the party? But because his grandparents who live with them are in frail health, this young man said to his friends, no party this year. They tried to convince him and cajole him to go ahead with the party. You have nothing to worry about. We're all in good health. It'll be safe. It's your birthday. Let's get together. But in spite of their pressure, this young man was able 
to keep his eye on a distant star and said, it's only one birthday. We can wait until next year. God's delay is never a sign of God's absence. God is always faithful. And sometimes it means we just have to wait. Amen. Let us pray. O long-suffering God, who is dismayed by the actions of your children, we confess that at times we doubt your power and turn to other gods, thinking they will fulfill our needs. But we confess we do so out of fear and a selfish desire to avoid the yoke you would place on us. We do not trust that Jesus Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. We thank you for your faithfulness the assurance that you will never let us go, even when we are not faithful to you, you are faithful to us. Such knowledge is too wonderful to us, too lofty for us to attain. It is the solid ground under our feet, especially when things are crumbling around us. We pray on behalf of others. Have mercy on those who are sick. Extend to them your special care. We pray for those who must be careful about their health, that they may be safe. We pray for those who must leave their homes to work, that they too may be safe. We pray for teachers, parents, and children that they may have the patience for learning to continue. We praise you, O God, for listening to our prayers. You encourage us to come to you. We praise you for never letting go of us, even as we seek to be free from you. We praise you for being involved in our lives, for forgiving, healing, and guiding us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us now offer our gifts to God. Please join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God sent his son
Thank you for joining us today. It has been good to worship God together. Please plan to join us again next week. In the meantime, have a safe and healthy week, and, and always please be mindful of your neighbors. Go now in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.